In class, we saw that the velocity of an electromagnetic wave depended on the dielectric constant. So if we have an electromagnetic wave impinging on a boundary between two dielectrics, the transmitted wave will have a different wavelength than the incident wave. And here we're showing that the wavelength in medium 2 is smaller than the wavelength in medium 1, which means that the dielectric constant in medium 2 is greater than the dielectric constant in medium 1. Now, the, since the tangential components of the electric field intensity must be the same on both sides of the boundary, we saw that this implies that the phase fronts must match along the boundary. And this resulted in the condition that the refractive index in medium 1 times the sine of the incident angle is equal to the refractive index in medium 2 times the sine of the transmitted angle. If the incident angle is some angle other than 0 degrees, we see then we will get refraction of the beam. If the incident angle is 0, that is the incident beam is normal to the interface, the sine of 0 is 0, and the transmitted angle will also be 0. I have here a container that's filled with water. This side here is curved so that I can bring in a light beam that will be at normal incidence to this water-air interface so that there will be no refraction. And then this side is flat here between the water and air, so then I can observe the refraction that occurs between the water-air interface. This will be where the water-air interface is. So I've measured off 30 degrees from a normal to that interface, so th that is the direction the incident light beam will come. So let me put in our container of water. I'm going to bring the light beam in now along that incident angle of 30 degrees and we see the refracted beam here. So let me mark where the refracted beam is occurring. So the refracted beam was along this direction. So with an angle of incidence of 30 degrees, then the transmitted beam going from water to air has a transmitted or refractive angle of 42 degrees. So let me put the water back on here again and just show that again. So when the incident angle is 30 degrees, we see that the refractive or transmitted angle is going to be about 42 degrees. Going back to our equation that describes the refraction, the angle that the light beam in the water makes with the water-air interface that incident angle was 30 degrees and we measured a transmitted angle of 42 degrees. In the water, N sub 1 is the refractive index of water, N sub 2 is the refractive index of air which is about 1, so solving we get a refractive index for water of 1.34 which is close to, if you look up the value of the refractive index of water, you would find it's 1.33 so that we got fairly close for uh, this simple experiment. If we increase the incident angle until the transmitted angle is 90 degrees, that is referred to as the critical angle, because for any angle then greater than the critical angle for the incident beam, we'll get total internal reflection, and we'll show that in a minute. But going back to our equation for the uh, describing the refraction then, if we put a transmitted angle in of 90 degrees and our index of 1 for air and our measured index of 1.34 for water, we can uh, obtain that critical angle as 48.3 degrees. 
So right. I've measured off an angle of about 48.3 degrees, at least as, as well as I could with our little, with the protractor I had. So let me put in the water again. And now as the incident beam approaches 48.3, when we get to 48.3, you see the total internal reflection occur.